let's talk about requirement number nine, restricting physical access. So this is kind of a mirror to requirement number seven. But while requirement number seven was about limiting access to logical data, requirement number nine is about limiting access to physical data. And it's very comprehensive. It includes your offices, your premises, how you deal with visitors, how you deal with your own personnel, how you store physical media, how you transmit physical media, how you destroy physical media, and a set of other sub-requirements to really make sure that your physical protection of data is bulletproof. Let's take a look. Requirement 9, with the full name of Restrict Physical Access to Cardholder Data, is about protecting premises, people, and physical media that are in contact with cardholder data. It's the physical equivalent of requirement 7. We do have a considerable list of sub-requirements this time, but they're all very simple and specific. 9.1 is about entry controls, cameras or badge authentication for doors for specific rooms. 9.2 is about making sure that visitors are distinguished from personnel. It can be as simple as having IDs with a different color, and they must have their access limited. 9.3 is about restricting physical access. That is, access control of specific locations where cardholder data is processed or stored that contains servers or hard drives or other physical media where they are. 9.4 is about authorizing visitors. So visitors must be accompanied and they must have badges that clearly identify them. Also, you must have visitor logs and you must request expired badges from leaving visitors. 9.5 is about storing media securely, being in locked rooms with access control, for example, with biometric unlocking. And this goes both for actual media, such as hard disks and USB drives, but also printed paper records with cardholder data. 9.6 is not about storing, but it's about distributing media securely. It's about having processes to transport media that contains card data, such as hard drives or USB drives, including tracking it when sent by mail and having management awareness or approval for transporting it. 9.7 is about strict media storage and accessibility, so having an inventory of all physical media with cardholder data to immediately be aware of something that may be wrong with them or if any of them go missing. 9.8 is about securely destroying not needed media. Whatever media contains cardholder data, whether paper or a hard drive, it must be destroyed securely. It doesn't matter if it's shredding, burning, or demagnetizing, but there must be a destruction certificate. 9.9 .9 is about protecting devices in specific that capture card data, such as POS systems at a coffee shop. They should not be tampered with, and personnel must be trained to detect if they are tampered with. And finally, 9.10 is our usual document and enforce requirement for all of these policies and procedures. Let's start with 9.1, enforcing entry controls. Very straightforward. This is about controlling the entry of users with access to card data environment systems and data. So one of two choices, you must either have cameras or access control, such as locked doors unlocked with biometrics, on all entries and exits monitored and maintained for 90 days. So if you have physical media with card data in one room, you need cameras or access control in one room. If you have card data in 20 rooms, you need this for 20 rooms, and you must store the data for 90 days. Note that this also includes securing, for example, device ports, such as USB or network ports, where an attacker could install a keylogger or another device, as well as restricting access to network access points. It's also important to understand that you need to gather enough user data on people that enter. So for example, you don't need just a paper sheet with the date and the name, but you need their role, 
their permissions, their specific purpose, and more. It has to be more granular. 9.2 is about distinguishing visitors. Very clear. It's about making sure that visitors are easily distinguished from personnel. This is to not allow them to blend in in case they want to cause some trouble. They're clearly identified. For example, the simple color coding of badges takes care of this. Personnel have blue badges. Visitors have red ones. Then, but besides this, note that visitors should also have different access permissions, naturally, as well as be properly terminated when they leave. By this I mean the company must ask for their badge back when they leave. Not doing it is a very subtle but a very clear fail of this requirement. You cannot let somebody leave with a credential that gives them access to your premises, period. 9.3 is about restricting actual physical access. So, sensitive areas where cardholder data are stored or processed must have restricted access. So, we already stated in the first sub-requirement that there must be access control, so you're aware of who enters. This sub-requirement is about minimizing who enters. So, for any room or environment, who is authorized to come in here? In a way, it's the physical equivalent of requirement 7. Remember, that requirement was about minimizing who could access each set of data, and this is about minimizing who accesses each physical set of data, each room. And unsurprisingly, it follows the same rationale as requirement 7, the principle of least privilege, decrease or cut access whenever possible. If this employee doesn't need access to this room, don't allow them in. If they only need to access the room when accompanying another user with a different role, don't let them come in by themselves. Very simple. Principle number four is about authorizing visitors. By definition, visitors are people who are not familiar with your internal security procedures. That's the definition. They're not held by the same set of standards as your personnel. So therefore, they must be controlled. So first, visitors must be accompanied at all times in sensitive card data environments with badges that clearly identify them. These are two faces of the same principle. They must be accompanied so that they're not alone with cardholder data and they must have clear identification so that they cannot blend in. This is all to prevent them from possibly attacking you. Also, visitor logs must be kept and expired badges must be surrendered. Again, these are both very important. Not having proper visitor logs or not demanding a visitor's badge at the end of the visit are both enough to fail this requirement. Then, requirement 9.5 is about the physical media themselves. It's all about storing physical media securely. In other words, any media that contains cardholder data must be under lock and key. That's it, subject to strong security measures. And it's important to clarify that physical media are not just hard drives or USB drives or physical servers, not just electronic systems, but they're also printed versions of cardholder data in different records. So even in a very simple environment of a coffee shop, for example, where you have paper receipts with cardholder data, they must be in a locked room with strict security measures. It's also important to annually revisit the security of physical media for the same reasons as many other requirements. Networks change, people change, vulnerabilities change, the data that you're storing changes, maybe even the card data flow itself might have changed by then. Then, if 9.5 was about storage, then 9.6 is about distribution. If you want your physical media to be secured when stored, then you definitely want them to be secured when distributed. So you need to know what media is distributed and who it's distributed to. If a hard drive leaves a locked room and it has a lot of card data, you better know where it went and who it went to. What you want to do is classify media in terms of data sensitivity and you want to define which specific roles have access to those media and why. For example, you may have 
a USB stick with a small backup of card numbers that are going to be purged, and you may have a master hard drive with explicit logs that include cardholder data of the last 10 years. These two should not have the same sensitivity and not be handled by the same role, unless naturally there's a strong reason for that. Additionally, moving any media off-site must be approved by management, or at least management must be aware of it. And the transport itself, for example, if it's via mail, must be secured and tracked. 9.7 is about strict media storage and accessibility. It's about proper inventorying of the media. This is crucial so that you can immediately detect if any media go missing as well as have a bird's eye view of the sensitivity of all media contained. And unsurprisingly, these inventories should be reviewed at least once per year for the same reasons as usual. Sub-requirement 9.8 is about destroying media that are not needed. Just like we talked about purging unneeded logical data, in requirement 3, we are now talking about purging physical media that are not needed anymore. And whatever medium they are in, paper, hard drives, USB drives, they should be safely destroyed. In the case of hard drives, they may be demagnetized or the cost, physically destroyed, securely erased, zeroed out, or others. But whatever the medium, proof of completion of the process is necessary. For example, a shredding certificate by the provider or just a certificate of destruction in general. In the case of printed materials, these may be shredded, burned, or others, but they require a certificate of destruction as well. Every destruction type requires one. Requirement 9.9 .9 is all about protecting devices that actually capture cardholder data, such as POSs. These are devices that receive payment data in specific, and they must not be accessible by attackers. The canonical example is an attacker installing a skimmer on your POS that copies the card numbers. So there must be an inventory of these to begin with, which devices actually capture card data. Then these devices should be periodically examined for tampering. But more than that, staff should be trained to detect tampering themselves and to report any suspect activity by anyone interacting with the device. Again, using our coffee shop example, the people who are at the register must report if they see anything suspicious. If they think that someone is messing with the POS machine or placing something on it, they must report it immediately, and they must be able to detect this themselves. And finally, 9.10 is our customary requirement about documenting and enforcing all policies and procedures. As with other requirements, everything that we talked about, from visitor distinction, physical restrictions, securely storing media, securely moving it, securely destroying it, and everything else, should be documented, and employees should enforce these policies. What are some examples? POS skimming is the main focus of sub-requirement 9.9. We are trying to prevent the practice of skimming where the attacker installs an additional component or actually changes the device. For example, on the part of the payment terminal where you have a card slot, an attacker can install a fake card slot that couples on top of it. And once installed, the person can't even tell the difference. It's like a cover, but it captures data in real time whether the magnetic track or the pin, and he can do it either locally or even broadcast it in real time. And staff training is crucial to detect these devices. Then, this requirement is in many ways the equivalent of requirement 7. So requirement 7 was about need-to-know access of digital data. This is the physical equivalent. We are minimizing access based on roles and functions, but not access to data access the physical locations. And finally, the destruction of both physical and digital media can be done by a myriad ways. But the important thing here 
is that at the end of the day, the provider certifies its destruction. It can be shredded, burned, degaussed, exploded, whatever. But there must be proof that it was done. What are our key takeaways here? First, this requirement is about restricting access. It's all about preventing access from real-world individuals, both distinguishing them, but also increasing the security of sensitive assets. Then, 9.1 is about enforcing access control physically, either with cameras or authentication for safe rooms, while 9.2 is about distinguishing visitors. They cannot blend in with other personnel, different patch colors, and different access permissions. Then, the next two. 9.3 is about actually restricting access to physical media, and specifically, limiting that access as much as possible related to the roles of different personnel, while 9.4 is about authorizing, logging, and accompanying visitors to the premises, not allowing them to be alone or to have a chance to attack your premises. Then, 9.5 and 9.6 are about physical media. 9.5 is about storing it securely with physical protection measures, while 9.6 is about moving it securely with both management awareness and tracking of the transportation medium. Then, the next two. 9.7 is about inventorying media, cataloging it, so that you immediately know if something is missing or was compromised. While 9.8 is about securely destroying media. When not needed, it must be disposed of and with a certificate. The final two are 9.9 and 9.10. 9.9 is about specifically protecting devices that capture card data. In other words, preventing POS skimming and similar practices both in terms of protecting the devices from attackers, but training your own staff to identify the tampering. While sub-requirement 9.10 is about documenting and enforcing these policies and procedures. As usual, all of these points must not be done informally, but they must be documented and enforced by staff. So as we see, requirement number nine, is all about protecting your physical data. And it does have two kinds of clusters of sub-requirements. One is all about physical locations and access control, your own personnel, visitors, and how you enter locations. While the second cluster is about physical media, how to store it, how to transport it, and how to destroy it.